Hey everyone, this is Corey with Stafford ZDC, and today I have an unboxing and almost like a, a quick little maintenance repair video. And um, yeah, we're just gonna get into it here. So right away, I'm gonna tell you what I have in the box. First of all, the unboxing knife is the Jack Wolf Knives laid back jack. Uh, so the knife in the box is a Vero engineering knife. Now I kind of said to myself that I wasn't gonna get any more Vero knives after uh, the Neuron, just because none of them really interested me. Um, that being said, I always have really enjoyed the look of the Synapse. So one came up uh, with a bunch of scales, and also the fact that the number on it matches the number I wore in high school football, which, you know, people can say whatever they want about that. It's it's a number that I'm always going to remember, and it's always going to be a part of who I am. So uh, that's kind of neat. So I figured I would pick it up, and it is number 66 for those who are going to be curious. Um, all the extra scales are wrapped up here. Not really worried about those. Uh, we can go over those in a moment. But yeah, we'll go over them now, actually. So let me just put that down. We'll go over these extra scales. There's a well-used set of natural micarta. There's a new set of natural micarta, which is what's gonna be put on here. Some blue G10. There's also some aluminum scales here that uh, they're not dirty. They just look like it through the bag, I would assume. There's a little dirt in there, but not a big deal. Um, yeah, some aluminum scales there that were made by somebody. He didn't disclose any details about it in his post. But uh, let's take a look. You can see that this is severely off-center and the blade's even rubbing in places. And now he said that this was, uh, it had been sent to Vero before and Joseph fixed it. it had, there's a washer out of place underneath one of the bearings. So we're gonna take this whole thing down. Like I said, I'm gonna swap the scales over to the uh, natural micarta scales. And I'm also gonna be using uh, KPL products for this video. Uh, down in the description, I have become a, uh, a partner with KPL. So I have KPL Heavy, regular KPL, and their uh, little cleaning uh, doohickeys here that I can't remember the name of. Uh, these are all gonna get used today. Uh, I do have a code for 10% off. It is STAFF10, S-T-A-F-F-10, -F and that as well as the link, uh, the affiliate link will be in the description, being very transparent about that for you guys, that I will get some kind of a kickback if you go through that link and use the code, so I do appreciate it if you do that. Uh, their products are great, I've used them for a long time, and just recently found out about the partnership opportunity, so I was happy to jump on that. Needless to say, let's uh, finally get this underway. So our pivot is looking like a T8. Uh, I just have a Weeha drivers in the, in, right here. Uh, that set comes from TRM. Immediately that felt weird, popping that out. I don't know uh, what else to say about that. It just felt strange, like something kind of clicked in or out of place. So we're gonna put that there. I'm also gonna deploy the blade here so we're not dealing with a blade under tension. Oh yeah, and I didn't show this either. The pocket clip screw is bent to shit. So that's gonna get addressed in this video as well. So is this not T8? No, that's T6. T6 for our scale screws, no biggie. Now, I don't know how these go together, these knives. I might have to take more screws out, but I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to take this, the front side off here. That's uh, how I'm gonna be able to get the pocket clip off. And how I'm gonna be able to get to the internals. These screws I'm going to leave inside the scale so I know where they go for uh, when I change the scales out. That is a long screw that just came out of the bottom there. I will show you that in a second as I'm fiddling to keep this in place. You can see very long screw. 
So that is definitely going through to the other side to hold the pocket clip in place, at least to be one of the clips holding the pocket clip in place. Let's push the pivot through, put pressure on the lock bar, and just push. And then we get our blade. So I'm guessing the issue is that right there, is that this pivot's backed out on this side. And yeah, it's definitely not supposed to be. It's that shouldn't be uh shouldn't be like that. That's gonna I'm gonna assume was what our issue was here. Alright, now we're gonna pop this side out. Wow, it's dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. You can see all the gunk and just shit that's uh, piled up in there. Let's get one more T6 screw in here for the pocket clip. All right, and now, maybe, yep, there we go. Now we are fully disassembled. So I'm gonna clean everything up here. First things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little cloth. This is very Nick Shabazz style. Uh, my cleaning methods here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is use this cloth. Just kind of wipe any surface stuff off, which is the stuff that's uh, you know sitting right on the bearing race, the detent track, things like that. I'll use one of the KPL, um, one of these little guys to get in a little closer in a moment. Yeah, I can. The uh, steel washers in here are free floating as well uh, for underneath the bearings. So they don't ride completely on titanium, which is a nice thing. I do like to see that there are steel washers. I wish they weren't um, free floating. I wish they were kind of fit in there somehow. But that's not the case for a lot of knives, so I'm not super concerned about that. Sorry if you hear any barking in the background. The grass is getting cut and my dogs are barking. Well, one of the dogs is barking. The other one's just chilling on the bed, hanging out. Yeah, this is very, very dirty. All right, so a lot of the gunk now is in some hard to reach places. Uh, let me clean the bearings and the pivot first, actually, before we do that. Bearings, I'm just gonna roll in the cloth here. I put some more alcohol on it. I don't know if that was on camera or not. Okay, so that stuff's all cleaned off. So now I'm gonna use these, uh... man, I wish I looked up the name of these, but they're the little like cleaning picks, I guess is the best term I'm gonna come up with for these, uh, for KPL here. You can use them dry or you can use them with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Uh, right now I'm just gonna use some dry and then I can come back with a second one if I feel the need and uh, get rid of more of that schmutz. That, there's the dog. Tucker, knock it off, dude. Puppies, they're uh, a blessing and a curse as I'm sure many of you know. Let's get in on that bearing race so you can see, uh, you can see the shit coming off. Uh, the bearing race here and then there's a bunch of gunk in where the stop pin rides yeah i'll definitely be coming back in with another one of these with uh, some rubbing alcohol because i'm afraid i'm not gonna get it all cleaned out ella you're fine like I said, the joys of puppies. We have two of them, so it's always a fun time here at the Stafford household. All right, little nooks and crannies are cleaned out. Let's grab another one of these guys. And I'm just gonna dip it into my bottle of alcohol here. So now we have the tip saturated. This kind of helps get in there. And 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol is effectively a degreaser at that um, concentration. There's other concentrations. I think the other one is uh, 70 or 73, something like that. 
and that is a uh, that's good for antiseptic purposes but for what knife guys want you're gonna want 91 percent that's what's gonna take off the uh the tape residue from your blade things like that and uh yeah so we are looking good and clean now one of the other things we're gonna do is i'm just gonna put a little bend in this pocket clip i'm just pinching this area right here underneath my finger and bending against it. I don't know how much, that's not enough to bend it back. Also gonna try not to break it too. Can you use the scale to take a look and you can see we're still gonna sit proud. So we need a little more bending. This is a gen one synapse. I think that's probably worth mentioning. Uh, this is uh, one of the original 200. This is number 66, as I think I've said earlier. Um, I'm gonna shut my window here so you don't have to hear the tractor the whole time. Still might hear it, but it'll be a little quieter this way. All right, how's that? And that looks a lot better to the eye. It's still tapping. All right. The trick is you don't want to, I mean, you don't want to put too much pressure because this can break. You know, it's a really thin piece of titanium where that bridge is there. So I'm not trying to break anything because I want to clip on my knife and I don't want to bug Joseph from Vero for a new clip if I don't have to. If I can't get it to bend the rest of the way I need, which it's still not, let's say I'm going to grab Leatherman. I'm going to use the same cloth here so I don't muck up uh, the finish. Hey, you're fine. Alright. I'm just going to bend against. That's a lot more leverage than I can get with just my hands. So let's see where that leaves us. Yeah, we're definitely, we're good, we're good now. We're making good contact. So let's get this show on the road. Let's put this side back in, which I lost both of my posts. So let's put them back. Backspacer back in. Let's take some KPL. The stuff does come out fast, so that's something to be careful about. You don't need a ton of it. I definitely use too much, but it's all right. I'm always happy with the action I get on my knives, so I'm not super concerned. Uh, normally, you would put a pivot through right now, but this knife is kind of, uh, you know, we can build it this way. So let's take this back out, actually. And we're gonna go down here, which I think you can see that. I hope you can see that anyway. So I put the lanyard, put not lanyard posts, the posts for the backspacer in this side. I am gonna drop this pivot through now there is a D-shape to the pivot, so that's something we're gonna have to keep an eye on. Uh, looks like the D-shape goes towards the bottom, which you can see the bearing fell out. I don't know if you can tell, but it is flat on the bottom side there. So I'm just gonna rotate this now to avoid any issues later. It's close enough. So now I'll come in with a little KPL as I did on the other side. That's a lot of KPO, but it's okay. I've had this bottle for a long time. It's not super expensive, and it does last quite a while. That was a shit ton that just came out, but that's okay. I am going to put a little bit onto the bearing race of the blade there. 
you can see where the bearings were in contact. I put a little KPL on the top. I'm not squeezing here or anything, I'm just spreading it out. Um, just so you guys know. Okay, let's set that guy up that way. Now I'm going to drop this bearing on this side. Come on, just a little bit. Okay. Bearing goes over our pivot. And now I'm going to use KPL Heavy for the detent track. Um, even on knives that I've used other lubricants for, I always, and I mean always, use the KPL Heavy on the detent. It's a much thicker, like higher viscosity KPL, so it stays in place and it works really nicely for detents. So I'm going to keep that trend going. This guy here. All right, and now we just have to reseat this guy. It sounds like we're good. Pivot's now pushed into place. All right, now let's see if we can remember how to put this thing together. Uh, those screws all came from the scale. I forgot the interior clip screw, didn't I? Yes, I did. So we're gonna have to put that scale on first. This is the joys of doing this with a knife that you've never done this before. So, gonna need this. Lovely new natural micarta scale. This is the interior one, so I'm going Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to line up. Come on. It's not the uh, most straightforward thing to do, that's for sure. put this on a screwdriver because it does not want to go through the scale what would suck is if these scales are for gen 2 and the guy didn't tell me that it's actually funny enough it's threading through the micarta um so that's kind of funny start putting the clip in place here I know it's probably tough for you guys to see what's going on here. Um, I'm just screwing the clip into place, which is now set from the inside. So now that is attached and the other one will go through from the other side. So now we will reattach this side here. Why are we not going on? There we go. So now we're on, which means we can take our other screws, pop them in. Definitely have those switched. So let's go with this little guy up here. And uh, we're fighting the thing the whole time here. The lock bar. Pops, stop. All right, I'm not trying to go nuts with that.
All right, since our pivot wants to come out, I'm gonna put the pivot in place temporarily. So I'm just gonna drop it on. Hey, stop. Tucker. Dogs are gonna play and bark, so I apologize in advance. Hey, stop it. Cut it out. Like I said, I apologize for the dogs. Man, these screws are such a tight fit that they literally have to be threaded into the scales. Just kind of crazy. Hey, knock it off. I may speed this part up slightly, probably not. Is not the best at editing. Uh, it looks like the scales are on here with some kind of like end cut carbon fiber. So that's neat. With some orange in there. But you guys know me, I'm a big micarta guy. So of course I had to put the micarta on. Was there ever another choice for me, you know? Why are we not threading? Oh, what's the problem here? Man, the dogs are fucking barking. Jesus Christ. Yes, I know it's still off center now. As I said, nothing has really been uh, put fully in place yet. God, it's killing my hand. Taking so much torque to really get these uh, screws in place. And we're not catching. I don't know why we wouldn't be catching threads here. Does it have to do with pivot tension that we're not catching this? All right, I'm gonna lock the pivot down really tight. Which it looks like it's starting to improve the centering, by the way. Um, the only other thing I can think of, like I, I mentioned it earlier, is if these scales are actually Gen 2s, and yeah, we're not threading at all with this screw. And these are the ones I left in place on the other scale. Are we lined up? We're lined up. Putting a lot of pressure down to see if I can get it to catch. I have tried to film a video with the KPL thing for some time now, and every single time I've had the dogs bark or people come in, it's been a nightmare. Come on, what the fuck? Are these screw? Are this is the scale not? Uh, pull that leg. Is it not uh, countersunk enough? Like, I don't understand why this won't come out. Is there a screw swapped somewhere? Like, I'm going to pull the screw from the other side out. This won't even come out now, guys. This is insane. This is nuts. All right. Will the pliers grab it? Because I certainly can't. Yes, pliers will grab it. Let's pull this one out. Let's see how this one looks. 
God, this one took some effort to get in, too. I should mention that. Now, this one's definitely a longer screw. Yeah, that for sure is a longer screw. The threads look a lot, little different on that one. Let's, let's try it this way. See, this guy threads in. Yeah, I can feel that catch. It's taking some effort. It's not cross-studded or anything. Just taking a little effort. Now let's see if I can get this little guy in on this side. Because, worst case, I'll order, I'll get a replacement screw. Well, it's going in. So. Alright, I gotta switch hands. This shit sucks. It is killing my hands. Using drivers like these that are narrow for a long period of time is not comfortable at all. Alright, scales are tight. Centering is decent. Actions meh. That is probably because we're probably over tightened here. As I said, I am gonna play with this uh I'm gonna play with this pivot now that I have all the other screws in. So let me pull this guy out and put a dab of Loctite on there. Um, KPL also sells little bottles of Loctite, if I'm not misspeaking, which I could be, but I was browsing their site the other day when I signed up for the uh, membership thing, the partnership, not membership. And they, I believe, did have some thread locker on there. It is in the liquid form, which is not my favorite. It's kind of a pain to work with, but I've heard their stuff is pretty good. It's uh, Vibratite is what they sell, I believe. All right, that feels really nice. Okay, so there's a touch of blade play. Let's do a little bit of a turn. Yeah, a little turn. Okay, I'm really not feeling any play. The action's pretty good. And our centering is dead on. Yeah, okay. Ooh, detent's a little light. Are we not engaging? No, we're engaging, we're good. Snaps right open, and it's pretty comfortable in hand. The clip's a little bit of a hot spot. Um, this is a knife I bought just because I wanted to try it out. Um, I haven't had a chance to handle one of these, and I dig the design a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm going to give it some time, and you guys will get a full review on this. And that's going to be it. Um, once again, I do have my code, uh, STAFF10, for 10% off your order from KPL. And you can find that as well as my affiliate link in the description down below. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me through this with the dogs barking and the tractor running in the background. I do appreciate it. Thanks so much. And have a great day. Take care.